Terminator, Predator, Star Wars, Terminator 2, Predator 2, Star Wars 2. <laughs> Are these your favorite movies, but wished it wasn't so long to watch them all together? Well, guess what? We got the Canadian movie just for you. It's called Phobe, and you're listening to... B! Movie Mania! That was pretty good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the crossroads of camp, the bastion of the bazaar, the place where low budgets meet high praise. Yes, it's B-Movie Mania. And now, B-Movie Maniacs, here are your hosts, the cream of the crap, the connoisseurs of cult, your cinematic creepy uncles, Paul Brooks, Mike Hayes, Jason Hulls, and Crazy Chris Hudson. Hello and welcome everybody listening out there. Uh, you're, this is like we just yelled and you heard Mr. Kaufman say, B-Movie Mania. I am your host, the number one favorite maniac, Michael Hayes. And with me, as always, is Jason Hulls. Um... Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, Chris Hudson. Great, crazy Chris Hudson. Uh, no? Uh, uh, Paul Brooks? Are you here? Oh, yeah, yes, yes. Oh, hello. thank God. Someone's here. I thought I was speaking in a new void. Wait, hey. hold on. I just... Hold on. What? <clears throat> what? Uh, what? I'm uh, opening my beer. No, that's... your. It's. Oh, oh, oh okay. God. That was too much effort. Yeah, uh, sorry. <laughs> Uh, and also with us, uh, rounding out the, the normal duo, is very special guest, Ashley Gansky! Heyo! Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to be here! Be here! Uh, with the, be movie, you guys the, get it. I get it, you did a little joke yes, there. Yes, a little one. That's good. Hey, hey Mike. Yeah, Paul? Wh- what is happening? This is a weird episode. This is a real weird one. It's crazy. Just listen, people... The other two guys have family things they're doing, and so that is fine. Just because you and I don't have a family. You doesn't... find a guest without a family? Yeah, we yeah, get, our guest has no family. This is, listen, this is just a bunch of real cool, I mean, I wouldn't call us phobes, but, you well, know. Well, oh. No, yeah, no, yeah, we're not. <laughs> we're not scared of other people. Right. We're just. Depends on what kind of phobe you're talking about, I suppose. That's true. An alien or a racist. <laughs> Yeah, but hey, can I can I tell you this? Uh, I'm drinking a Blue Moon Pacific Apricot 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 Wheat, Ooh. Uh, and it's delightful. I just want you guys to know that if you're ever in the mood for a Blue Moon, <laughs> get one of these Pacific Apricot Wheats because it's delightful. Do we are they sponsoring that, that us now? Sounds very. Summery. I know that's what it sounded like, but no. It sounds summery and light. It does mm-hmm. sound summery. Mm-hmm. Just a nice little, like a little twist on a beer. But the apricot is very pronounced, and I like it. Hmm. Oh, all right. Well, apricots. If you want to sponsor us, uh, the f- apricot board. Just the whole fruit. Yeah, just, the just whole get in here. Fruit. <laughs> get, spend, listen, we'll make it well sponsor. worthwhile. Apricots. That's what's yeah. for dinner. Yes. Boy, we we uh we really need to do some quick takes. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't wrap. I don't know. All right, Paul called it. Let's do quick takes. <laughs> Quick takes! All right, Paul, uh, why don't you give me a quick take? Oh, yeah, so real scary movie, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's delightfully quick. Yeah, because they're Canadian, so. Yeah, yeah, well, too quick for me to think of my quick take. Do you happen to have a quick take? Um, delightful. <laughs> I like the love story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Um, I guess if I were to, to shorten this movie down, I would just say, uh, you know, let's take a nice stroll. Hmm. Take, a, uh, take a nice stroll. Just anywhere. You know, in the woods, <laughs> along the train tracks, through a parking garage, maybe a steel mill. Just walk somewhere, up some stairs. Take a stroll. Yeah, I think stroll just may have been the working title for the film, and then they <laughs> added an alien. <laughs> You know, this movie's got, it needs something else. I love the strolling, but we need one, 
It's missing like one thing. What could it be? Huh? Got huh. it. What? We get some like plaster of Paris. We okay. spend like okay. eight dollars on it. <laughs> okay. That's no. That's build. most of our budget. I mean, it'll be fine. All we, right. All right. Maybe it's maybe it's six dollars. Okay. Okay. And uh, we make an alien head okay. to momentary momentarily and sporadically disrupt the strolling. Okay, but what, so just a head, like a floating head, like a Zardoz? No, you can put some sort of vague uh, camo, camouflage, mm-hmm. net, sort of a sort of a large net My thing. dad has one in his basement, so we can yeah. grab, probably grab oh. that for free. Oh, that's perfect. Okay. <laughs> we're, we're, we're set. Listen, guys, we have one thing to talk about, and it's Dab. Greg Dab. Yeah. <laughs> Dab. Gregory Dab. I trust you stress the importance of bringing that thing back alive. It's of no value to me, Dad. Yes. Dap is the right man for the job. Uh, we watched a movie called Phobe. It's a Canadian film made for a cable channel. Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, there is a uh, subtitle. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, a subtitle to I'm it. I'm sorry. What is that, Paul? Uh, that would be The Xenophobic Experiments. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Which, as we learn in the film, is what Phobe is short for. <laughs> Is that yes, how? Yes. Is that how you like to make your your nicknames, Paul? Like you that's, pick something right in the middle. That's what the movie said. I'm just going <laughs> off what the movie said. That's fair. And there's actually like a sub subtitle in another language. I'm assuming it's the alien language. Oh, oh. yes, you're Probably right. I don't know if you caught that. I was like, oh, I don't know that language. I think that maybe. A second subtitle. Yes. I didn't. You know, you're probably right. Yes. I don't know what it says. Why subtle on one? But you know what? I just I have hope that it says something real great. And whatever. Uh, hey, Mike. I don't know if you were planning on reading the uh, IMDb description or not. Uh huh. I but can. You, you can. But I was also going to suggest I do have the DVD with me here, mm-hmm. and I was going to maybe uh, read the back of the box really quick if you want. Hey, Paul, could you do us a favor and just maybe tell us what this movie's about? Maybe not in your words, but someone else's? Please. Yes, absolutely I could. Um, <laughs> I, this, is, this is interesting. This is interesting. In 1994, aspiring Niagara, Ontario filmmaker Erica... Benedicti, I think is that how you say that? Sounds good. Was working yeah. part-time at a community cable channel. Over the course of a year, and aided by a dedicated team of friends, volunteers, and fellow film rebels, she wrote, produced, directed, and edited a wildly ambitious feature-length sci-fi action thriller for only $250. <laughs> oh, now, did wow. you pronounce it that way because it's Canadian, right? Well, yeah, of course. I mean, yeah. you got to. Yeah. Did you did you do the uh, conversion rate on that for what that would be uh, in American dollars in 1994? Oh, in 94, I have no. I well, I don't know today either. So no. 180 U.S. dollars in 1994. I, I did a little research. <laughs> okay, very cool. Uh, so that's what it's about, huh? It's about someone making a movie. Did we watch a documentary? Yeah, that's really more about the making of it, wasn't it? Sorry, <laughs> yeah, nothing about the actual movie. I have my phone here if you want me to do the other part too. <laughs> We can make you do it. Wait, so wait. Just to clarify, on the back of the box, it says nothing about the actual film? Uh, well, I didn't re- read all of it because okay. I started to get scared that I was get, like giving too much away. <laughs> okay. Um, what is there to give away? <laughs> well, I just did I, you know, I didn't know if you had things planned because often on this show you have things planned. Not when I'm running this bad boy. That's like up you to have, you. That's true. You usually save your facts for when you're not hosting, I suppose. Well, I hope you have um, some phobe facts. Uh, I mean, I have <laughs> phobe so facts much. on the back of the DVD. <laughs> so much pressure. But, but when she convinced her employers to broadcast <laughs> the finished film, phobe became a, a local sensation, was invited to screen at festivals, and remains one of Canada's most infamous cult hits. Intervision is proud to present Benedicti's ultra-low-budget epic, complete with impressive visual effects. Well, Roman... <laughs> Hey, hey, Roman hey. Candle Some of pyrotechnics. those were just amazing. I agree. <laughs> Alien, uh, yeah. See, I don't, let's just, yeah, yeah. That's, I'm, I'm going to stop it's there. It's nothing about the movie, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, this is a sci-fi thriller, I guess you'd say. Mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. suspenseful. There was some. There was some um, horror movie aspects with all that the that scary oh. forest walking scene. Oh my goodness! There was yeah. definitely like we're we're gonna put in some creepy vibes. What would that? I don't know if that would necessarily be yeah horror well category, but I feel like they stole. Um, specific dialogue from horror movies because they didn't... Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, but what really made that scene scary and what really makes any scene <laughs> scary is a Coors Slow Pitch sweater. Yeah. God damn it, Paul. If I could find that sweater, I would be him for Halloween in a heartbeat. Oh, my God. Of course. I still... I, I tried for the entire... 10 minute long scene <laughs> of them walking to read what was written on the side of that man's sweatpants. Oh god. It was it was just Bengals. Was it? Was it? I, but it l- looks like so. way more letters than that. It did seem very wordy for just one word. But if you think about it, Niagara is not that far from Cincinnati, so it could like, check out. But Cincinnati? Cincinnati Bengals. Yeah, but you think he doesn't have like Canadian football pride at least? He prefers the Bengals? What, like the Stampede? Who cares? Is that they a- had so much Canadian pride in the film where they were wearing, like, Toronto's, like, Blue Jay mm-hmm. t-shirts. I feel like... Other Canadian things, other- probably? <laughs> yeah, I feel like the, the mullets, mullets and the, deni- yeah. the denim alone. <laughs> All right, we're having way too much fun. Uh, whoa, how, how dare we? Okay, so this movie... How dare we? <laughs> this movie... <laughs> All right, how does how does Phobes start? Uh, a, a solid uh, in the woods fight fighting scene. Fighting, yeah. Um, with our hero and um, savior, <laughs> Dab Gregory Dab, um, who actually do you remember the bully in Boy Meets World? I, uh, Frankie the Enforcer. Do you remember That's Frankie the Enforcer? That's a great name, but I, I don't remember There's him. There's a bully in Boy Meets World. He had, he had like, the spiky hair, and he was, like, big and, like, a bullyish. But he looked like Dab, Gregory Dab. But, I'm not, you know, Ashley, I just want to say here, I'm not disputing you on this. However, <laughs> Dab, Gregory Dab, looks exactly... Go, Google, you guys got a computer there. Google Nasty Boys Jerry Sags. <laughs> no! All right, and you're going to be like, what the fuck? Direct ripoff of Nasty Boy and WWF Tag Team Champion Jerry Sags. Jerry? Why is his name Jerry Sags? <laughs> I don't like that. I like it. <laughs> oh, oh you are no. Not Look at that. Wrong. Holy shit. He's got you the mullet and not everything. Wrong. I mean, <laughs> yeah. What is great. this Holy cow. living shit? What is it, this? Erica Benedicti was clearly watching some wrestling in the 90s. He's nasty. Wow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 All right, Paul. Well, okay, Wait, I want well, you to Google okay. Frankie the Enforcer. Okay. Oh, yeah, let's get a side by You know what? I'll do a graphic of all three next to each other. We'll do a comparison. Okay. Uh, we'll get Frankie the Enforcer here. Well, maybe I was wrong <laughs> oh. in my head, but this is what I was oh. envisioning. I see that picture is more like that. Does he Does he look like a young Jerry uh, Sags? <laughs> no, he looks no. like a young person who I've seen in other movies. He's gone yeah. on to other things. But I feel like this picture is what I was picturing. Yeah. With the spiky, like the He's spiky hair. He's got some hair. spiky hair. He's a big like boy. Like early season. <laughs> Sorry, audience. Yeah. Early season, Boy Meets World, Frankie the Enforcer. Yeah. But, like, Frankie had, like, a heart of gold just like Dab. Oh. Yeah, did Sags have a heart of gold? <laughs> no. A oh. heart, it was a heart of pure garbage. It was nasty. Oh, wow. Well. Nasty garbage. So, this movie starts in these woods. Like, you know, the woods behind your parents' house that you grew up in? Mm-hmm. Um, and you know how your friends would run around behind the trees and pretend to shoot each other with your handguns? That's basically what there was in this movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's a phobe. It's the great monster that Paul described for the film we're making. Yeah. Um, and then uh, some people slowly moving through these widespread out trees and then getting killed. And then Dab Bazooka's the phobe and that's the end. Credits. <laughs> Credits are <laughs> the end of the movie? Yeah, it's done. <laughs> This really is a romantic phobe. It really phobity. is a it's a it's a romance film. 
<laughs> Sorry. It is. Uh, it is. It is. No, okay. it's just, you're not wrong. I know. Um, okay, so, so Paul, maybe you remember this. Yeah. After Dap, Greg Dap, mm-hmm. Bazooka's the phobe, we jump cut to four months later. Yeah, well, yes, uh, his his the love of his life dies in this in this laser battle, mm-hmm. oh. and then four months later, he turns in some other dude at like the police station or whatever, right? It's I think yes. it's supposed to be, but I think it's just like the cable counter where you <laughs> oh for sure hundred <laughs> percent. Like most of this movie is just the cable, yeah, like the, the, the cable the, studio. somewhere in the building or outside <laughs> of the building. Yes. A hundred percent. Oh, shit. We find out that a phobe has escaped and has, like, w- somehow, like, worked his way into an asteroid belt or something like that. <laughs> yeah. You see, recently we've been transporting them off their planet to be safe to terminate them. However, during this process, one of them has managed to escape. Stolen one of our ships and flown directly into an asteroid field in Sector 1084. And I feel like the guy who plays the commander memorized no lines and he was like (laughs) he's like you need to feed me one line at a time i don't care about punctuation (laughs) oh are you listen guys there are outtakes on the dvd of someone delivering a line and then someone off camera deliver like saying okay now your your next line is this like no no one memorized anything anyone memorized anything at all (laughs) i lost a few good men even more men were lost in that asteroid and we find out that as I put in my notes, uh-oh, this phobe can fuck. <laughs> Which is bad. Yeah, that's not good because we find out that the phobe has somehow, what, like regenerated uh, its its sex organs or something? <laughs> yeah, like reproductive. And it's out in the galaxy trying to fuck, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> It's it's so baffling because there's only one of them, but apparently you can still reproduce, which I guess other organisms have done that. Yeah. Right. There's it, eggs involved. It in lays eggs out. is what I was getting at. Those right. eggs are a whole thing. Right. So he has no it, choice he's gotta but do to it. set out to capture, and this is very important, capture, not, not kill, kill yeah. the yeah. foe. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is very important. So that uh, they can bring it back and like study it or whatever to figure out how it's doing that like something like it doesn't matter none of this matters they like to know how it's managed to do this this way we can stop the remaining foes from doing the same thing until they're all safe and terminated so what you're saying is you want this thing brought back to life are you nuts you know what they can do you've seen it yourself uh, but in case we haven't pointed out already uh, this all of this is taking place on a completely alien planet. This isn't like some future Earth or anything like that. It's like in a far-flung galaxy yeah. sort of Star Wars thing. Yeah, another small planet. Now, it doesn't look different. No. Well, that's your opinion. I mean, I guess I've never been to Canada. <laughs> Actually, I have. But wait. <laughs> what? We did forgot to mention the real, the cool cow suit that the commander wears. Oh, the commander does wear a cow suit. <laughs> Is it cool? It's so cool! <laughs> What? Come on. I guess in 94. It looked like this like cool like windbreaker <laughs> suit that was white and then it had like black paint splotches on it. That was cool. Well, uh, that was cool. Mm. <laughs> so anyway, da- Dap leaves Cal- Commander Cow and lands on Earth. He, he flies into the back of a house and then two guys are really uh, confused by it. So they go up to this check is, it out. Here we go. This is what I want to get to. All right, Paul. You know what? If you want to get to it, I'm going to let you get to it. Light it okay. up, Paul. Jerry and Cora Slowpitch <laughs> are chilling, watching TV in the in their house. Oh. <laughs> I, I could be wrong here, but I'm fairly certain that Jerry, and the reason that I'm calling him Jerry is because that's his real name. No, Jerry was a name. Yeah. Okay, cool. Jerry is also the bass player of Gribble Hell, who does yes! the soundtrack. Yes! Yes! <laughs> Gribble so that's why I'm putting that together. Hell. Is it Gribble or Gribbly? Yeah, it's Gribbly. I think it's Gribbly. I, 
It's G R I B B L E hell. Gribble hell. Um, oh, that's not as fun. It's not for as me. Good, no gribbly hell. No, it's gribbly hell to me was like the funnest anyway, thing ever. Anyway, go ahead. Anyway, <laughs> all right. Jerry and <laughs> Slowpitch <laughs> <laughs> take a stroll in the woods to figure out what in the hell is going on. Mm-hmm. And long story short, they run into the phobe, and they get their asses blown up. Okay, so that probably took about, what, 30, 45 seconds? Maybe a minute? Two? Two minutes. I mean, it took me 30 seconds to describe what happens. On screen, it took more like 15 minutes, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah, and it's delightful. <laughs> come on, Jer. I don't think this is a good idea right now. Maybe we should come back tomorrow when there's more light. What's the matter, Tim? You scared? Not scared much. Ah, uh, don't worry about it. You just frightened because of that horror movie we just finished watching. Probably nothing out here anyway. And it is un- to me that was very unfortunate because I liked them a lot and would have would have liked to have seen more of a through thread with them. You know, they gave me a real strange brew vibe, and I really would have liked more of that. Hard agree on yeah. that. <laughs> um. <laughs> So, okay, so so they die, and then we jump cut to uh, our, a new character, Jennifer, who uh, is at high school, I guess, for, I think that she's okay, legally allowed there, I guess? I don't know. Everyone <laughs> that was there was about at least 40. Yeah, it was confusing. <laughs> Everyone that was in high school. did not look like high school Yeah, students. but you guys got to keep in mind, remember... This was this came out in 1994, but we're in Canada, so really that translates to like more of a 1988, 89. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. And we all know that teenagers in the 80s looked like they were 35, 40 years old. So yeah, that makes sense. You're right. Um, I, I didn't, I didn't account for that <laughs> in my age guess. And just real quick, uh-huh. like on the DVD, you watch some of the special features. There's like a behind the scenes feature at like. Um, was it called uh, the making of Phobe all new featurette, where <laughs> where they come back and interview everybody in 2015? <laughs> what? No, 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 no. It just that sounds amazing. Oh, okay, it is. It, no, but, it, I want to watch it. But what's great is that, like, they actually don't look all that different. So I think they maybe were pretty young when okay. they were acting in this movie because, like. Tina, who plays Jennifer, you know, doesn't look like she's 65 years old or anything. She looks pretty much the same. Well, maybe yeah. maybe that's from the low stress of living of on of a Niagara Falls, Ontario. <laughs> mm-hmm. They don't mm-hmm. live in uh, this country. So true. God, why don't we live in Canada? Let's, let's fucking move to Niagara. We'll be from, become friends with Erica, and we'll make. A movie! Let's make Phobe 2! Yes, in. God, it does not sound bad at all. No, right? <laughs> You're pitching a dream. Already pitched it, and Paul, I didn't even say what I wanted it to be. We should save the, the sequel for after that we just talked about the actual movie. But be thinking about your sequel ideas, right. guys, because I really want to know. It's, uh, it's burning in my brain. Uh, if we could pull together like 500 bucks, Erica <laughs> still works at the... Erica does she? still works at the cable at the cable place. You? So. Hell yes! Shut up. She does. Hell we just yes. find the address and go like be like Erica. Let's go. Big you know? fans. Yeah. All right. I'm into it. Let's make that Star Wars movie. Cool. Uh, okay. So we jump to the high school. There's floppy disks. There's a guy with the same two of the same color flannel shirts. It's great. So they're going to get beers for a party. That's important, but not really. Really, the only thing that's important is as after uh, Jennifer starts walking, I guess, home from uh-huh, school. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. But, I, I mean, it's weird. She has like a 15-mile walk across <laughs> train tracks. Okay, this is where this is where I got really confused. Because I was like, I think that this whole movie <laughs> was just a pl- like just a play to show how much Canadians walk and how much we don't. I like <laughs> feel like there are so many scenes with just walking. There's walking through woods in the opening scene. There's walking. There's like a 15 minute walking through woods before Jaren and Slow Pitch die. Then Jenny walks for a good, what, seven to ten minutes. Somewhere in there. Um, before... So there's just so much walking. So either they're just showing, promoting how healthy Canadians are. <laughs> yeah, but you know, like zero offense to anyone. 
it doesn't look like Dapper Jennifer were doing a whole lot of walking prior to shooting the film. <laughs> I, I mean, know. you know, that just, doesn't, but that doesn't stop it from being a propaganda film, which I believe is what actually is, is right. Implied. It's a right, and you know what? We don't know what their heart health is based on their their physique. Their, their physique. Got it. Right. Got it. Okay. They yeah. got they got solid hearts. We yes. they walk everywhere. I mean, they they beat they they were fighting aliens. And they were doing it calmly. <laughs> calmly? They were. I mean, like, no change in affect. No no fear. Nothing. Greg and Pete said they'd even go to the beer store for us and uh, get a couple cases, if that's okay with you, Jennifer. Yeah, sure, that'll be great. I could go for drinking some beer tonight. Paul. I keep distracted. What weird thing happens on Jenny's walk home? She finds... <laughs> what may or may not be an uh, interesting rock that could ha- have some sort of value, <laughs> but is in fact... Oh, what is it? A phobe egg. Oh. This is an odd-looking rock. What if it has any value? And fortunately, Sergeant Gregory Dapp <laughs> shows up. Uh, I don't know how or why or oh. how that happened, but he shows up He's in there. the nick of time. To prevent uh, Jennifer from a certain death. Yeah, she was going to be gone from a, a little fire spark from the side of the uh, fence post or something. Yes, the phobe is a master of hitting anything that is metal <laughs> or wooden or concrete. Near you, like not, not right, a near, flesh yeah, body. near you, not if it's on you, just yeah. pew pew laser and pew, Yeah, it's, it's pretty great. Um, so, yeah, so Dap saves her, and then they go to Sarah's house. Oh, I'm sorry, Jennifer's house. Yes. Ashley, could you give me a line reading about how, how her mom reacts to the fact that she has found out that her daughter, her sole child, has been attacked by a creature? Can you give me, like, a, just a line reading of how she reacts to that? After the police in that really yeah, great costume let me, shows up? Paul, maybe we do a little role play real quick? Sure. Okay. All right. I'm going to do a little... little Police are here. What was the call for? Uh, yes, my daughter's been attacked. Oh, uh, let me come in then. Okay. okay. Would you like some tea? Yes. <laughs> End scene. That's the whole thing. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I feel like there may have been less emotion. We were trying to get as little emotion as possible. I was trying my hardest, but you know what? I'm an emoter. Yeah, what are we going to do? It's hard to get that deadpan. <laughs> I've called Dr. Milnes to come and take a look at you. Maybe he can give you something to relax you. <laughs> it's, it, okay, so, so Paul, if you were to rate this movie on, out of one out of a hundred emotions, how, where would it go? Like, how, how, how much emotion happens in this film? Like, 95, but it's Canadian emotion, you know? <laughs> it's a different kind of emotion. <laughs> they have their own unique take on it. It's almost like a Vulcan. Yeah. You know, it's there. It's There's a lot under the surface, more oh. so than Americans really. Oh. They just don't feel the need to show it. Wow. It's fair. That's deep. It's really good. Do you, do you have more questions about the house? Uh, no. I, I don't want to get into the scary fucking bedroom she oh, was in. Oh, wow. <laughs> the Beanie Babies? No, there was more than Beanie Babies. There was a clown on the swing. There was a giant like ventriloquist tr- tr- doll. There was yeah. a, a spot. Yeah, let's 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 it's, not let's it, not do it. It's flat frightening. Uh, <laughs> so then they run away. Uh, Dap and Jennifer run away, and the folk chases them for a while. And we get some sweet pyrotechnics, or just pyro. Oh, yeah. It's just more like pyro, really. Yeah. And then they go to a restaurant yeah. to get some dinner. Uh, is restaurant sort of slash bar, I guess. But that's yeah. when the, that's really when the love starts. Yeah, it does. Slow dancing. Oh. I mean, yes. Mm. <laughs> that's when the love starts. Canadian I love. I know that for me, <laughs> nothing says, do you want to dance? Like eight and a half minutes of heart pounding near-death experience <sighs> running through all of town sheer terror With. and then immediately do you want to dance yes well paul yeah, sure. if, if you were dead sitting face do yeah. the whole yeah. time you, dead face dead and, face and i've never seen your eyeballs just <laughs> <laughs> Paul, if you were sitting at this booth, you tell me, if you're sitting at this booth with Dap, Greg Dap, and you heard that sweet beat playing, do you hear that? Paul, do you hear it right now? Oh, I hear that gribble hell going on in the background. Yeah, you hear that? Boom. 
You hear this going on right now that we're hearing in the background right now because it was edited in. You tell me you don't want to get up and just grind on that dance floor? I think I just said nothing sets the, <laughs> the mood more than all that heart power. Yes, I'm 100% I'm sorry, on board. I, I'm sorry. I, I, miss, I misheard you. I'm very sorry. You thought I was being sarcastic. I did, I, but you were being Canadian sarcastic. Canadian sarcastic is just genuine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so they're dancing, Ashley. Now oh what? So that's when the love started. Okay. <laughs> so that was hot, basically hot. when the movie started for me. <laughs> Um, Phob breaks into the restaurant, mm. which is like, what? The There's, Phob is sounds like, like a big fight everyone scene. in the restaurant was just like, oh my God, it's my dad. It is <laughs> 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 his classic Canadian hunting gear, but they yeah. were, but it wasn't, it was an alien. And then they were like, shoot. And they took their guns out, but they were like, we can't shoot in here because We'll make a mess of this restaurant. So yeah. then they re quickly ran out the back door. And they were like, where do we go now? Where do we go now? And then Gregory Dapp was like, I got this. I have a super sneaky lockpick. And he used his electric lockpick because he is also an alien. But he bleeds yellow blood and he used his super sneaky lockpick. And he got into the army surplus store. Thanks mm -hmm. a lot. There also is a shout out at the end of the movie for that. So then he <laughs> got into the army surplus. And it was awesome. And then they hid. And he was like, oh, my God. I forgot to tell you, we've been carrying around this egg this whole time, and it has a tracking device in it, but don't you worry, I got this really cool tracking scrambler, and then he, they made this cool buzzing noise, and that means he scrambled the tracking device, and the, the phone was like... He scrambled the egg. Yeah, he scrambled... <gasps> yeah! Classic cool. Canadian joke. Um, <laughs> and then the phone was like, where'd they go? I don't really know. And then, what happened next? Uh, they go to Rob's house. Oh, yeah. Hi, Jennifer. What are you doing here? Can we use your father's radio? What? My father's radio? Sure, but why? It's a long story. Well, hold on. I'll go get the keys to my father's office. Now, in this scene, there are some detailed facts that I'd like to maybe do a little bit of a... Phobe quiz! Phobe quiz! Phobe quiz! All right, Paul? Yeah. What? is the name of the planet Ooh, I love quizzes. that Dab, Greg Dab, says he is from. Uh, Mambu or something like that? Uh, Ooh. no. Um, Ashley, would you like to steal? I mean, I can read the answer. Well, you <laughs> spoiled the, the magic here. I was gonna really just <laughs> ask Paul these hard questions, and then you were gonna show, oh, seem like a real smarty pants. Cool. Mandora. <laughs> I was Edited. close. You you had an M, um, Paul. Yeah. Can you can you recite the test tube number that Dab Greg Tab was born from? Oh yes. Mm -hmm. Two zero one <laughs> three two five oh. seven two. My God, how did you memorize that? It's pretty. It's wow. got to be. Yeah, you know. Holy. Good, all right. Good. Cow. Good job, Paul. Okay, now, for the for the, all the marbles, Paul, all the space marbles. <laughs> can you name Dab? Greg Dab's space number? Oh yeah. Because <laughs> he had a space number. He had a space number. I mean, everybody two, has a space number. Two. Three. Mm. I'm uh two two mm. one mm. zero four two. That is the right uh. number of numbers. Yep. But Ashley, uh. could you go it for is, it? To correct you, it is two six six dash three eight two two. Oh, I just I well, Paul, I'm that. sorry, you've lost this round of uh, folk quiz. Dang it. Hopefully there'll be another one. <laughs> there won't. No. Well, you had your chance. <laughs> um, so then uh, they hear a noise. Paul, how does Greg react? Do you recall? This is not a quiz. It's not a folk quiz. This is just a question. Well, how does he react calmly would be my guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, he has a weapon. He has a special weapon he goes hunting for the folk with. Oh, God. Oh, yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. He, there's no other way to say it. He busts out a lightsaber. Yeah, baby! 
and it's a thing. It happens. It's 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 real world canon. It mm-hmm. it's a real lightsaber, <laughs> and it's sweet. And oh shit! Look, we're we're gonna get into this at some point. I don't know if you want me to hold off or if you just want me to do it now. Rip the band aid. You got the extra added bonus effects. Well, yeah, I have. I, I, I don't know if you guys picked up on this or not, but they did redo a lot of the visual effects yeah. for the re-release, for the 2015 re-release of this film, and it bugs the shit out of me. Right. <laughs> Fair. I, I enjoyed this movie, but anytime I saw a visual effect that I could tell didn't fit in <laughs> with, with the time period, it takes me out a little bit. And what's really disappointing to me is that when you compare it again on the DVD here to the original 1994 effects, it's like it it's like you know George Lucas syndrome. Just leave it alone. Paul, That's my opinion. Speaking of Paul, do you think that they legally had to take George Lucas's idea of remaking, doing a special edition, if you will, because George Lucas, I'm gonna say it, Ashley, do it, stole the idea, <laughs> stole. The idea of having a Jedi with a mullet mm-hmm. in the prequels. Uh, oh, Obi Wan has a mullet. Is yeah. that right? Yeah, and I think I think he saw this and he said, "Women know how to do things." Better. Yeah, they do. And George Lucas <laughs> just said, "Fuck it, I'm taking it. It's mine. I'm a white man." <laughs> and I'm George Lucas. And what are you going to do about it? Yeah. And no one did anything. Someone should have put him in a corner. And he's like, "Air but... in Canada. What is you going to do?" Yeah. Eh. So I'm sorry to argue with that, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to argue with that logic. Yeah, I think that's what happened. Um, so yeah, so the light shaper gets shown. <laughs> Rob gets hurt. The phobe kidnaps Jennifer. <laughs> Jump cut steel mill chase. Let's go. <laughs> yes. Oh wait. Uh, 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 cut this part out if we've if if it's not at this point yet. But have we gotten to the scene where? Dab, uh, Dab explains his his glasses oh, and his I'm, eyes. No, no, Paul. No, this is it. Don't have cut this out. So I hope we're hearing all of this. Um, yeah, he <laughs> explains <cut> this. <laughs> no, Paul, don't cut this. Uh, yeah, Dab explains it. Well, what about it? What about his glasses? In fact, we haven't talked about his glasses. Well, this is the best part of the movie. Um, he's been wearing these sweet, sweet Bret Hart, the hitman, the hitman Bret Hart. <laughs> Glasses, who is from Canada, so that checks out. He's from Clearly. Calgary, but close sure, enough. Sure, sure. He is an alien. Mm-hmm. And... Bleeds yellow. Um, <laughs> there's <laughs> ultraviolet, <laughs> r- more rays that make... Oh. I don't know. Someone help me. He The sun is... It's something about, like, the... The ultraviolet, yeah, ultraviolet yeah. rays like are sensitive, and they turn his eye. They glow yellow. They, his, yeah, I couldn't help you there. Sorry. Well, my eyes aren't sensitive to light. It's just that the ultraviolet rays here are more intense than on my planet. Thus, it causes a chemical reaction, and my eyes, well, they glow yellow. Glow? Really? Can we see? Yeah. Okay. I guess he's just embarrassed. Does his eyes glow? Yeah, they don't seem yeah. to hurt because yeah. Jennifer is like. Can I see? Ooh. Like, it's the most emotion in the entire film she yeah. shows. And <laughs> She's like, that's cool. And, and yeah, like, he's like, yeah, sure. Mm, let me see. And then he does it, and it seems fine. He doesn't, like, scream or anything. And then he <laughs> goes and lights, shows his lightsaber off, but doesn't and then, But then he, anyone. like, walks through, like, a couple, like, dark hallways, and his eyes are glowing yellow. Yeah, it's badass. It's totally sweet. Totally worth it. Mm-hmm. So they go to the steel mill. <laughs> <laughs> Finally. So... <laughs> Uh, so he walks around the steel mill, goes up some stairs for a while. That's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the oh no, then he finds Jennifer back behind some bo- boxes, empty boxes that used to help hold beta tapes. Mm-hmm. Or did three- we skip the part where she gets kidnapped? No, I mentioned it. I think. Okay. No, I did. But then I think we had to jump Paul, back. Cut that part out. No, Paul, leave it in. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so he finds Jennifer behind some three-quarter inch box tape, whatever, Phillips tapes. It's obviously in the studio. Mm-hmm. And uh, oh, right, so then yeah. they run through the steel mill because the phobe found them again. Yeah. 
It's this pretty- is the climax, really, isn't it? Kind of. I mean, a, a Canadian climax, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hope to one day experience a Canadian climax. Oh, God, Don't no. we all? Oh, wow. Don't we all? No. We do. We all do. Anyway. I don't remember what happens. It's just a, a they, fight this, sort of thing. They fight. They got, for some reason, the what? lightsaber. You don't remember Uh-oh. Gregory Dapp <laughs> riding on a steel <laughs> Floating through the air like the hero he is? Yeah, that was pretty epic. You're right. What? That was amazing. For the listener, let me describe. There's a crane that Jennifer gets... But is it really like a full crane? It's like this like very slow (laughs) moving like... It's like a magnet that I think they move like big pieces of steel on. But it moves like at the speed of snail. Yeah. And, And he rides it like across the sky. (laughs) <laughs> it's Cross amazing. <laughs> oh, Pretty great. It's so good. It's uh, there's a, a, a fight with with pipes because their lightsabers are broken or something. I don't know. And then yeah, yeah. he like the the phobe like throws a gun, which is basically like a, a super soaker wrapped in like, <laughs> like in like gauze or something. Yeah, and he like tosses it, and then he's like, I have no more guns, so I pick up a steel pipe, and then they have this great epic battle, and then he gets eventually, Jen saves the day to save her love. Yes. <laughs> and then she, by just basically chaotically moving levers on this like <laughs> magnet thing <laughs> it's like, like well, I don't really minutes. know what's happening I don't really know and I, then the steel thing the magnet hits the the phobe and he's like I don't know what happened and then Gregory rides it across <laughs> the sky like the hero he is and tosses a Ghostbusters oh yeah like ghost catcher yeah towards the phobe and he's like and then he hits basically a car alarm and the Ghostbusters thing zaps the phobe (laughs) end of movie credits ta-da no you would think you would think that that would be it oh but it's not what keeps me from the credits As set up in Act (laughs) 1, there are some suits Mm -hmm. who have a vested interest in the outcome of capturing the phobe. And you hear a rumble, and you start to see (gasps) some sort of space nacelles start coming down from the sky. (laughs) And it's hyper-realistic and cool. And (laughs) they land at the steel mill, and all of the... Cow guy, cow suit guy, and all those, all the, you know, the higher ups get off of this uh, alien craft to uh, pick up the captured phobe. Nice work, Greg. I know you can do the job. Yeah, I barely pulled this one off. So why are you here anyways? All I needed was a simple ship to get out of here. Nice job, Mr. Depp. I believe you deserve a bonus for finding the egg as well. There is a pretty clever little twist going on right here. About the spaceship? Yeah, I, it's it's not actually a super big spaceship, it turns out. And I don't know how they pulled this off. It's amazing. It definitely wasn't wobbling and blowing in the wind Wait as minute, it was guys. sitting on the ground. Wait a minute, guys. What, what? are you te- what are you guys talking about? Well, that was an amazing spaceship. Oh, it was. Absolutely. That was an amazing well special crafted. effect. Well-crafted. And I have to assume that at least... of the budget went into the spacecraft. Minimum. Yeah? You think that much? Uh, We'll go 15 to 20. Based on the ending credits of how many things were donated, (laughs) I think the whole budget went into that beautiful spacecraft. (laughs) What are you talking about? They actually, at some point on the DVD, say that a lot of the budget went to, like, the Roman candles and stuff. Yeah. Oh. Nice. Now, now I will say, okay, so so all joking aside, right. uh, they make a small model spaceship, which honestly, while very simple, it doesn't look that bad, like for oh, what no, it is, good. for right. what it is. But they force perspective it, and I I, right. I think it's it's obvious, but it's pretty good for what they do with it. Like it, the, the bottom part ends up being in the screen, and then people walk out of the legs because they're like positioned behind it far enough away, and the perspective is makes it look really big. Right. And it is, I mean, it's obviously there. It, like, it floats a little bit. Like, it's not perfectly permanent. But for what it is, like, someone had the foresight to be like, 
let's fucking do it this way, and it's right. pretty good. I mean, yeah, I'm agreed. just I was impressed that they got everything in focus. Yeah. Oh yeah, you're right. Totally. But but then there is, you know, they 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 get onto this planet, and there is, you know, sort of this little bit of a twist ending here. I see your commander didn't tell you. Probably a wise move on his part. I am the one that hired you. I don't understand. You hired me for what? To bring me my phobe, of course. I own them now. Okay, so the twist ending of this movie is you think it's over. He's got the phobe, and then his like his boss comes down, and you're like, all right, sweet. We're going to get out of here. I'm going home. Later, Jennifer. Love you always. Kisses. He would um, never leave her, by the <laughs> But um, what ends up being the case is, as Paul mentioned earlier, set up in Act 1, the corporation that it owns or has has purchased this mission wants the phobe alive and all this stuff's going on and so jennifer is like my only chance is the phobe phobe. (laughs) and so she pushes a button she she's got the controls now pushes the button the phobe comes out like reverse ghostbusters and then comes (laughs) out and then and then eventually there's a little fight he kills the uh kills the corporate guy Mm -hmm. and then uh then dab gregory dab becomes friends with the phobe and lets them fly away in the spaceship. Okay, this is what we need to talk about. What? what the hell? Right! Oh, well, I could tell you what the hell, but I'm, it's not going to make any but, more sense. L- let me get your guys' opinion on this. We don't we don't know, or do we, that w- is this the same phobe that killed the love of his life? Oh, no, well, I guess we don't know, because at the beginning scene... Where he shoots that sweet ass bazooka, Chris Hudson, come at me. Um, <laughs> we don't know if it kills him. He shoots it, and that's it. Cuts to the cuts to four months later, right? So we don't see right. that he killed it technically. But, but but either way, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense that he basically tells the phobe, the, the he says the ship is yours. Get out of here. Craft's yours. Take it. I guess just don't question it too much. It doesn't really. make sense. He gives the phobe this murderous beast, apparently, that the, the entire He's... civilization is trying to kill. Right. And they're upset that one's alive. Let's but the go. good part, the good part about this, and I'm sure Ashley's very happy about this. Thrilled. I know exactly is... what you're going to say. <laughs> now, well, you know what? You say it. Go for it. That they walk away with their arms around each other. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> our hero, yeah. Sergeant Gregory Dapp, has no choice but to... Uh, remain on Earth. Remain on Earth and shack up with his sweetheart, Jennifer. The high school student? Well, well we don't know how old he is. <laughs> it is his high school sweetheart. Now, she is just mainly... She's just in high school, and right. he's her sweetheart or whatever. Right. So They walk away with... He has his arm around her. Yeah. Which is the most physical contact they've had. <laughs> Well, in they the did do a slow dance to that really oh, yeah, good right, song. Oh, right. I forgot about the slow dance. Yeah. That was the start of their love. Mm. Either way, very happy ending. Oh, it's beautiful. Totally. Not so much of a happy ending for John Rubick. It is him. I was trying to look this up. I wasn't sure if it was him or his son, which both yeah, would have been who, tragic, but... Yeah, it was killed in a car crash oh. in 2003. Oh, jeez. Mm. He played our, our hero. <sighs> well, I'm having a drink. Yeah, drink, drink for uh, John. Everyone on the uh, behind-the-scenes featurette had nothing but good things to say about him. He was sort of like the guy of the group who brought everybody together that everybody sort of always rallied around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so it was really tough for everybody to lose him. I have no mm-hmm. doubt that everyone involved in this film was just like the nicest, sweetest people. Like, there's no way this movie, anyone in this movie was a dick in this. It, no. was, it was so good. Like correct. And when you read like the way they even did the credits, they were they seemed like such fun people. Yeah. I completely agree, and I say again, why do we live in America? Ugh. All right, we're coming. <laughs> we're on our way. We're coming, Erica. Erica, Erica we're coming. We're, we're coming for you. We're making Phobe too. Speaking Hell of, man. speaking of, has anyone got any great ideas for a sequel? Because I got one, but I'll I'll let if anyone's got one, I want to hear it. No, I'd love to hear yours, Mike. All right, I'll start with mine. Mine is, we didn't get too much into it, but there's a real creepy bedroom in Sarah's house. I mean, uh, that was... With a lot of... Is that yours, too? (laughs) Did you want a Toy Story version of that room? Oh, no, but that's amazing. Okay, so that's what I want. I want a Toy Story, the animals, the weird stuffed animals come to life, 
and then they have to deal with like the story's the same effectively like but it's also but like for kids who like creepy things <laughs> I don't know. Fair. That's what I want. I want like a spinoff of sorts. What do you got, Ashley? Um, I wanted a prequel of Jen, her tale of collecting each item. <laughs> um, so it was more of like a short, like short stories of how she collected each of the items in her in her bedroom mm. um, mm. from like the windowsill of. Like, like figurines to the clowns to the Ugh. like two weird masks. I wanted like each collection item because I feel like there's a story behind each thing, oh. and I feel like I wanted to know each thing, and I felt like it could tie into like <gasps> space travel. What if the end of that you find out that the, she has a doll of Dap Greg Dap, and that's actually just part of the whole story of her collection? Right. <laughs> She's just as collecting. Oh, yeah. Or what if she turned Dap into a, a doll? doll. Yes. Holy shit, Paul! <laughs> she's actually like some sort of creepy witch. Yeah, she's like a voodoo woman. Yes. Oh my god. All right, I got mine, you All guys. Right, what do you got? All right. So in the <laughs> sequel to Phobe, uh, the Phobe himself Ooh. Ev- eventually goes back to you know his home planet. There is. A war that breaks out between his people. You know, it's been ongoing for a long time, really. He realizes that the only people who can bring peace to that section of the galaxy are Jennifer and Dap. So he has to go back to Earth to retrieve them to go on one more mission to come, you know, bring Mm -hmm. peace to everything. I know what you're thinking. John Rubick died, so what's going to happen? That's why you called Jerry Sags <laughs> to reprise the role. Yes. Yes. And there yeah. you go. Yes. Yeah. You said. Love it. Or, you call Tina, get her back on board. Anybody can play the phobe, you know? What if, um, I mean, we, we take it to the next step and, like, we honor the death and we mm. have it be... Jen and their son, son, who is a hybrid alien human baby. Holy shit! Oh, I didn't even think of that. Well, he can be played by Jerry Sags. Right. Yeah, he can still do it. Yeah. (laughs) We don't have to remove that. No, it's all fun. But he could be the hybrid (laughs) alien baby. Erica, we are coming for you. Get ready. Rating time. I've thought about this long and hard, guys, about what we need to rate this as i've been wondering about this it comes down uh, to t- what how about uh yellow eyes that turn no the, okay hudson of y- okay ultraviolet okay, light. Hud- okay hudson uh i don't okay. know I, I i'm assuming chris hudson texted you and said you to fucking say something stupid like that paul i get it <laughs> anyway <laughs> uh i Personally, my first instinct is really to do one out of 100 Gribbly Hells. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's your... Did you have an, another option? Uh, okay, fuck it, Paul. It's that or it's one out of 100 266-3822s. <laughs> <laughs> well, per, per, per usual, we have the option, okay? All right. Paul, why don't you go first? Yeah. Look, it's a delightful little film. It's the type of thing where it's just so... It's really hard not to like because you can tell that it was just a labor of love. You know, it literally cost $250. They're Canadian. They're so nice. How are you going to not like this movie? It's impossible. So I had, a, I had a fun time watching it, even if it was a little slow in places. I mean, there's definitely spots where you're just like, oh, my God, come on. Stop strolling so much. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, of course, my previous <laughs> mentioned... Um, effects that the i would love to see the original version of this movie i would love that so much so i feel like i kind of need to deduct a couple of points for the unnecessary um redone effects i mean they were well done but i i prefer the original having seen them um so with all of that being said <laughs> I'm gonna go 78. Mm-hmm. Two, two, uh, what is it? 266 3822. 266 
twos, and there's a dash in there somewhere. Yeah, that's okay. fair. <laughs> fair, fair, fair. All right, uh, Ashley, how about you? <clears throat> well, so I enjoyed this film so much, and <laughs> I will agree with you that it it just was such a labor of love. You could tell that just so much love was put into every every aspect of it. From like you were like you could tell that a te- like teamwork was built into it, which mm-hmm, made me feel mm-hmm. just like warm and fuzzy on the inside. Um, and I do love that they literally tied in like every film genre possible from like sci-fi to horror movie to um, romance. So <laughs> that for me is a bonus. Um, I'm going to have to deduct a few points due to because I wish the romance storyline as much as I think that it was solid <laughs> solid you I more. wish I wanted more I wanted more from them um so did you want more physical contact is that what it is <laughs> no I feel like the physical contact you know what they just got to know each other they just met each other and they're in high school oh, or he's right. she's in high school so I'm not asking for much there there was a lot left unspoken between the mm. two of them <laughs> So I'm going to give it 80 out of 100 Gribbly Hells. Mm. Nice. Mm, nice. Very nice. Well, I guess this means I have to, yeah. Uh, Paul, you, you mentioned the, the redone special effects and how you don't like that. I understand that very much. I want to see those originals. But let me tell you. I really like the juxtaposition. <laughs> when you see a spaceship come down and suddenly the bottom half of your screen freezes and then the spaceship goes behind that half of the screen, <laughs> it's kind of amazing. It's kind yeah. of almost life-changing in my, in my idea. So I, I'm really into seeing the rest of that, Paul. So I w- I'd love to sit down with you, watch some of those bonus features, see what's going on. For sure. Um, so if you don't like that stuff, don't take my rating for what it is. I'm going to do 85. Uh, nice. Uh, Gribbly Hells. <laughs> of course. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, you like this movie. I think it would be worth it for you to just pick up the DVD. You would enjoy it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Intervision always puts out good stuff. I have plenty of their releases, and it's this is a well-put-together DVD because you know there's a lot of bonus features because again the filmmakers care and they yeah. wanted to like do a retrospective and all those things. Uh, uh, I no doubt. Uh, in fact, I'm sure that's on Amazon, right? So I can uh, we'll put a link in the in the thing and you can click on that link and uh, we'll make it easy for you. Uh, and please do click through that link because we get a little cut back if you Indeed. use our links to Amazon because we're an affiliate. Don't. Um, yeah, it's it's a whole thing. So please do that. Um, now you guys are fancy. Now what we need to do is mention the fact that Ashley has been fucking great talking about mm-hmm. this movie with us. Thanks and, for having uh, me. I'm so happy to be here. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's been really fun. Um, Ashley, do you have any sort of like plug situation you'd like to throw out? Oh my gosh. Well, I have a podcast that's not nearly as fun as oh, this. Oh, hush. Come on now. Um, it's called Love Hate and Big Opinions on the Issues That Matter Least. Um, <laughs> so that's fun. Uh, my, it really is. My friend and I, Liz, um, chat about literally the most minute of topics and we find things that we have strong opinions on with um, a bunch of guests around Chicago, comedians and um, all kinds of people of the sort, different. We have had poets and... You guys always have a great lineup. I'm yeah, jealous. We need to like tap into your lineup to get guests people. on here. Yeah. And where can from... we find, if somebody wanted to uh, track down that podcast, where should they go? We mm-hmm. are at we're iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and lovehatepodcast.com. Hell yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for being on the show. It's Thanks much for appreciated. having me. Oh my gosh, this was so much fun. Go find Love Hate first. Subscribe to that. Get into that. And then find B Movie Mania. Also subscribe, please. Reverse. <laughs> do the, do the and, reverse. Uh, leave <laughs> reviews for both, please. Please leave reviews. Yeah. It's all good. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, uh, you know, love. check in. Check in for next week because... Well, I can tell you, I'm really glad that they got Jerry Sags from the Nasty Boys tag team in the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> Jay? Jay? 
Chris? Okay. You guys hearing this? Call <laughs> Ashley. You guys. Hello. Well, I I have no idea what that was, folks. But uh, I, I I guess I'll try to decode that transmission and whatever that was and whatever it comes up, we'll put it up on Thursday here for a little bonus content. Maybe maybe it's Jade giving us a heads up on on what's coming up next. Hopefully so. Uh, if not. <laughs> We'll figure it out. All right. Thanks for listening, everyone. Uh, Bye-bye. Listen up, maniacs. Do you have a question or a comment? Would you like to uh, send some bourbon to Uncle Lloydie? You can contact the gang on Facebook at B-Movie Mania. You can also drop them a line at bmoviemania.com. Reach out. Touch them. They are touching themselves. And they might just reach back. I'm Lloyd Kaufman saying, see you next time on B-Movie Mania. Woohoo! Buy a t-shirt. Oh yeah, buy, sorry, buy a t-shirt. We have amazing new t-shirts that have our faces on them drawn by a man who makes us all look real gross. Except, Paul, Paul you look kind of handsome in that t-shirt. I think Johnny has a crush on me. Yeah, fuck Johnny. Anyway. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I love romance. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, check us out. Uh, there's a link on our, uh, we're on uh, Store Envy, but there's a link on our website. Check it out. And uh, shirts are great. Uh, love everybody. Bye. You already stopped recording, Paul?